<laughs> it was so weird last night, and this is this is where we go back to you know being spoiled with the Lions this year, and top three quarterbacks aren't good enough for us. Let's put our tie up. But last night it was weird rooting for the Lions not to secure a playoff position. Because if Seattle lost, the Lions are in the playoffs. They get the little asterisk next to their name. We all get to calm down. Everybody feels good about themselves. Mission accomplished so far for the year. But also, if Seattle won, it gives them a better shot at that second seed. Potentially a number one seed, but that's further down the road. So last night, you're watching, and it doesn't really matter who wins the game. It benefits the Lions. But we are so spoiled with three games left in the season, we're rooting for a team not to lose so we don't make the playoffs because we know it's a foregone conclusion. That is how spoiled Lions fans get to be right now. And that's why I can't stand the bitching. I can't stand the complaining. I can't stand uh, I don't like this guy. I don't like that guy. You may not like him, but this is the team that brought you to where we're at right now. So get behind them and support them. And last night was just, I, it was uncharted territory. Like how do I how do I not root for the Lions to make the playoffs for the first time and, in seven and years? It's funny because a couple of my buddies, uh, I was working last night doing the Michigan State Oakland game when we were on our way back. I was kind of texting with my buddies about that, and they're like, "I don't know what to do with my hands." You know, it was like Anchorman. Oh. He's just like, "I don't know what to do because I want him to get in the playoffs." And I was like, "Bro." They're in. They're in the playoffs. Right. They're unofficially. All they got to do is win a game, and they win their division. Like they're they're in. So go all the way. And he's like, "Oh, I guess you're right." You know, like that's it. It was, and and it is. And stick, you had this. You had this line, and I've been using it on social media. But I've credited you everywhere, which I is which is that. you know that runs anti in this town, especially in sports media. <laughs> you don't you don't give credit where credit is due. You just take it as if it was your own. But I still give you credit because you use this terminology about Lions fans. Yep. We are new money Lions fans. That's it. We go in the country club. We leave our hat on. We've got cut off jean shorts oh, yeah. and sandals. And the <laughs> yeah, we're but the Spencer Raxter of the, the lottery, country club. You're the lottery winner, and you think those lotto checks are just going to keep on coming. Keep on you rolling. You forgot about the poverty you've been living through your whole life. It doesn't matter. You're just going to spend, 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 and nothing is good enough for you right now. And that's what, you know, I, I love Lions fans, but I'm getting annoyed with Lions fans not being appreciative for what's on the table right now, for the for the opportunity that's presented to you. Because it's just, this is good, but I want more. And it's okay to want more, but you should still be happy with what you have right now because you've never had it. You haven't had it in 60 years. This is something I've never experienced. Usually when the Lions get in the playoffs, they had a back end, right? Right. They could have secured a spot four weeks out. Four weeks out. That's a quarter of the season. They could have secured a playoff spot. Obviously, things happened last night. They, now they're up for the second and first seed. But look, we're so spoiled, and that's why these guys like Easy and Spencer just drive me insane. Because they've never seen a quarterback as good as Goff, but it's still not good enough. And, and here's the, just to give you some context on it, Stick, like they could have secured a playoff spot before I even start worrying about the fact I haven't done my Christmas shopping yet. Yeah. Which, which is incredible, because I usually fire that up about December 23rd. That's when, that's when I, and you get what you get. When I go to the store, you get what's left. But you know now what I'm it's saying? if they don't go undefeated, it, 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 the team sucks. If Jared Goff throws two interceptions over the course of two consecutive games, Jared Goff sucks. If Ben Johnson doesn't get us 40 points a game, Ben Johnson, like we've become so spoiled and so just privileged. <laughs> and that's why I think we're new money Lions mm -hmm. fans. And it's the people that can play. And it's like, they've never actually watched Kansas City for an entire season, right? They've just watched the highlights on SportsCenter and seen Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey do their thing. They didn't watch the three-game skid where they had trouble and they couldn't find their offense. You know, they don't care about San Francisco losing three games in a row. They don't care about how Philly looks right now. You know, I keep hearing the Lions don't have a winning record against winning teams or the Lions haven't beat winning teams. There's only four teams with a winning record in the NFC. Pretty tough to get a win against a winning team. It's just the matter of the fact of the schedule. And then you look at Dallas. Dallas is 0-3 against teams over 500. And the Lions, I do believe, beat Kansas City, who's above 500. They beat Denver last week, who was above 500 when they beat them. So they beat the teams that are in front of them. The only team they've really got their doors blown off by is uh, the Ravens. And that's it. Right. And, you know, when you look at it, from from that perspective too, and stick by the way, hey, you're not supposed to eat the lobster with your hands. 
All right, you're not supposed to do that. Don't eat the lobster with your hands at the so table like that. So they give like you the that. little fork for it, the little <laughs> yeah. tiny fork. Come That's on. for the salad, right? The tiny forks. For take the that hat off, Stick. Yeah. T- take that hat off at the table, man. I feel like the old man. Like that's what I feel like. You are the old man. I know. Like, come on, young guys, just just relax, be patient. Like, I, I just want people to enjoy this ride. The Lions are ten and four. The Lions are in power position to win the division. The Lions are gonna have a home playoff game, and people are acting like this is the worst season they've ever played. It's so weird to me. But the, people are getting more pissed this year than when they went zero sixteen. Right. Why? I don't know. Instead of just being like, we got 10 wins. This is awesome. No, and, and we talked about this yesterday at, at Feldman. Like, I'm done I'm done explaining this, too. They're a good football team. Damn good. Period. Damn good. They're, they're one of the better football teams in the NFL. Period. Probably, they are. Probably what, the best te- Lions team we've ever seen. What, whether if, if, that makes you, if that makes you uncomfortable or whatever, I'm, I'm, then I, there's no helping you. Like, there is no helping you. If you're PTSD in it, then there's no – that's on you. That's a you problem. Go see a therapist or do whatever it is you have to do. Anson. Start drinking, <laughs> whatever, whatever you do to cope. Drug problems, whatever. Just do what you got to do to cope. This is a good football team. Stop. Stop. Stop worrying about what's going to happen, what could happen, all of that. There were still people yesterday. Well, you know, if they lose all three games, dot, dot, dot. No. Yeah. No. Wait, and, and everybody Nobody too. Was saying that. Who yeah, was saying yeah, that? They, were, they said it yesterday. Spenny, I, took, they, I took the text. And they were saying last week that the Lions were going to lose out and potentially not even make the playoffs, I've heard. Spenny, like, I, we got those The panic yesterday. button was hit it's when just, they went on a three and two skip. Spenny, you, you were here <laughs> like when, when, I said, when I said in week six that the, the division's over. Yeah. Which it was. Which it in, was. And in retrospect, it has been. Yeah. It's never been a, quote, one score game for the division. Never was there any pressure on that the whole way in. There were people yesterday saying, well, you know, you lose two to the Vikings. And in, even into last week. Those people are delusional. That's my point. Like, go see a therapist or do whatever it is you got to do, man. Because ever since everyone was terrified of the Packers and the Vikings, they've gone a collective one in five. <laughs> they stink. Yeah. And they're, uh, hey, stop typing right now and stop with the, well, if the division's your bar, Neil. No, that was you that said that. You said it. Yeah, I was told winning a division was more important than a playoff game at one point. I don't agree with that. I know. We had to have that conversation. But I, I will tell you this. One thing that's changed in my mind in the last 24 hours is that Dallas game is now important. During the post-game show, we had a debate. Would you rather win two against Minnesota and lose the Dallas game? And Easy and Anson were like, we got to win this Dallas game. I'm like, listen, a regular season Dallas game doesn't mean a damn thing. No. But it's, now it's it does. It's a measuring does. stick, and it's for the two seed. It, now, now it is, yeah. right? Now it is. If, if, if Philly would have taken care of business, it wouldn't have been for the two seed. Now there's something on the line. Now I want it a little bit more. But before that, I was just, it's a regular season game. Like, don't get too high. Don't get too low. If you go into Dallas and get your doors blown off in week 17, who cares? You got week 18, and then it all doesn't matter come playoff time. So I, didn't, I wasn't putting too much on that game. Yeah. But now... That could be a monster prove it game it's, it's for a both teams. Stick game. It's a measuring stick game for sure because, like we talked, Dallas hasn't beaten anybody with a pulse. Dallas is beaten up on, or Philly was the only team they've beaten that has a winning record. Yeah. And they're terrible on the road. So if you get them at home, you can beat them at home. It proves that you're a tier above what Dallas is. So that's that's an important measuring stick and like you said it's for the two seed. So Yeah, but but all the like late Dallas Cowboys energy that everybody has. And I said <laughs> and I you can set your watch to it. Like you you know how this works. That was my point. The Cowboys everyone are parachutes Cowboys. in. Yeah, everyone parachutes in right. on the Cowboys cuz they see them on Thanksgiving and they're always beating the piss out of Washington cuz Washington always sucks. Like it, we we see it all the time. And then everyone talks them up. And then they go do Dallas Cowboy things like lose to the 49ers. And the Bills by a combined score of 73 to 20. Yeah. That's what they do. That's where they live. That's what they've always been. And Since okay Boys to Men was singing Motown Philly. Motown that's the Cowboys. <laughs> that is. And that's why I didn't, like, people are saying in the chat yeah. that I don't hate the Cowboys enough. No, I, I don't think anything of the Cowboys. I look at them I just the like I look at Minnesota. They're a game on the schedule. Yeah. You got to. Actually, you Minnesota's probably Minnesota. more. Minnesota's probably. I do more hate important. Minnesota. <laughs> I hate Minnesota. I, I just hate that That's, stupid fucking horn. That, that <laughs> stupid horn. I, and, and, and this this will bug the shit out of you for the rest of your life after I bring this up. Hey, the skull chant's cool. 
No, it isn't. Yeah, it is. It's lame. The school kid, it's cool. They do it at all their sporting events Minnesota's, there. It doesn't even count. Minnesota's my least hated division. Team. All right, here's... here's this, here, I got it. This will get you Minnesota going. Minnesota sucked our whole lives, too, you know? Yeah. This will get you going, Spenny. And notice it when you watch the game Sunday. That stupid Viking, like, Viking symbol they have on their helmets... It almost touches in the back of their helmet, and it drives me crazy, and I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, Watch. True. It is pretty cool. Look at it. <laughs> I want you to look at it Sunday, and you'll see. Uh, Woolworthsports.com chat thread. Easy. It's not a discount to market when he has the third highest cap hit in the league. We got we to gotta do this dance with easy again. We're, it, we're, we're past it. Uh, are we? we because I've looked down right, and see. It's not a discount to market. It's market value. No, it, it is a discount to market because Lamar Jackson got paid $80 million but, in cash this year. Mahomes third, got $60 million he, in cash. He's getting paid Bosa third. Bosa got $51 million in cash. If he's getting paid third and he's the third quarterback, you're getting your value. Yeah. Two it's, birds, it's, both that's, stones. That's says, just what it boils down to. Two birds, both stones says Spenny just like Sparty Kirk. I love Kirk Cousins. Get your bag, Spartan dog. <laughs> hey, I, you've never apologized for that. No. You've never. Justin Ablocator still makes a Justin million bucks Ablicator, a year. Get your bag, brother. And, and you're dog. fine with it. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing that I'm mad at is Jaden Reed balling in, in Green Bay. That's the one that pissed me off because I knew he was going to be good at it. I know. He's got but, like six touchdowns this year. Now. But as soon as they said Green Bay's a factor, what have they done? Yeah. They Jordan Love. They Jordan Love. I don't want to hear it.